Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeme Outdoors. It's getting pretty chilly out right now and it's about that time to make some venison chili. I found this recipe online, I've tweaked it a little bit to how I like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of my ingredients. I don't have everything out here because it's gonna be cooked over the course of a day. So I'll bring up all the ingredients and I'll show you how much I use of each. And if you're interested, the link to the original recipe is below in the description. And I'll also list out all the ingredients in the description. So for this, you're gonna need a pound of pinto or black beans or kidney beans, kind of whatever beans you really wanna use. If you're in Texas and you don't like using beans in your chili, or you do and you just call it chili with beans, you can either have beans or no beans, it's kind of up to you. I know a lot of people have a preference on that. So I use dry beans and I soak them overnight. If you haven't soaked them overnight, you can either use boiling water and soak them for about four hours, switching out the water halfway, or you can use beans out of a can and just drain them and put them in later in the process. You're gonna need about 15 dried chili peppers. My local store only had two different types, so I got about seven or eight of each of those. You'll need a half a pound of chorizo. You'll need about two to three pounds of venison. If you wanna use beef or something else, you can put that in as well. You'll need one large onion, about six to eight cloves of garlic. You'll need some smoked paprika, cumin, and ground coriander. If you wanna add a little bit of spice to it, you'll need some chili or chipotle powder. Two to three tablespoons of tomato paste. You'll need some black coffee and a little bit of molasses. If you didn't make venison broth with your venison bone, you can use beef broth, but you'll need some sort of broth. And then some salt and pepper to taste and whatever ingredients you want to garnish, like sour cream, onion, cheese, Fritos, etc. As I mentioned, I've been soaking the beans overnight. They've got about an hour or two hours left. And I have these chili peppers. So what I'm gonna do with these is you need to break them into pieces and you'll wanna take all the seeds out because you don't really want the seeds to be in this chili. These peppers aren't really hot either, so whether you add more or less, it doesn't really matter as far as the heat goes. They're more of a sweet pepper and they have a good flavor and help kind of build the chili together. So you don't have to get all the seeds out, just as many as you can. So I'll just empty them to the trash can here. Just break it up into pieces. I mean, they don't have to be small, just some pieces like that. And while you're doing this, you probably want to go ahead and start boiling the water. Because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to pour boiling water over all these pieces of chili and let soak for about an hour. All right, so as you can see, I've got them all broken up into pieces here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the boiling water and pour it into this bowl. You're gonna let this soak in the boiling water for about an hour. You don't have to keep it boiling, it'll stay hot enough to do the trick. If you wanna go ahead and cut your onion now or go ahead and start browning your meat, you can do that. All right, so once your peppers have been sitting for about an hour, you'll want to drain it, but you wanna make sure you keep a cup of this liquid because you're gonna use that when you're pureeing it. So I'm gonna go over the sink to do this, but I will keep a cup of the liquid and drain the rest of the water. So next you'll add your cup of soaking water Add your peppers. And then you'll add your one cup of black coffee. <clears throat> and you'll wanna go ahead and puree this. And you're looking for a consistency, kind of like gravy. 
something a little bit like that. I'm gonna puree it a little bit more to make sure we get all the chunks out. So I'm not using a cast iron skillet here. You can use a Dutch oven if you want. I'm gonna use this pot because I'm actually adding a little bit more meat than normal. So I wanted to make sure I had enough room in my pot. So you'll go ahead and add your half a pound of chorizo. And you'll start breaking this up and you'll wanna cook all the way through. I didn't add any oil here. The chorizo has enough grease that you really don't need to add any. Once your chorizo is cooked, you'll remove it from the pan and put in another dish. Next, you'll wanna turn your heat up to high. When you brown venison, you really want it on high, otherwise it'll just kinda of stew in the juices and, and kinda of get a little bit chewy. So I've got it up on high. I'm doing about three pounds of venison. I have two pounds that are just plain burger, and then I have a pound that is Italian hot. So that way I get a little more flavor added to this dish as well. So I'm gonna start with a pound and a half. And the reason I'm doing this in batches is if you do too much meat in here, you'll have the same issue with it stewing a little bit. So we'll brown this. If you wanted to add some salt and pepper here, you could go ahead and do that. But because I use that Italian hot sausage, I figured that gives me enough of the flavor and salt and pepper that I really don't need to add any other seasonings into this. So we'll go ahead and do the second batch now. So at this point, once all your meat is cooked, if you wanted to add your other batch of venison back in, you can, but I feel like I need to just keep it minimum as it is and get these onions cooked. So you'll add your one onion in. And you'll want to cook these till they soften. It'll take about five minutes or so. All right, so at this point, once your onions have been cooking for about five minutes, you can add your the rest of your venison and chorizo back. Go ahead and mix that all together. All right, once mixed, you can add your six to eight cloves of garlic. I like garlic, so I'm gonna do about eight cloves. I'm using minced, you can use fresh garlic if you wanna do that as well. And you'll stir that and let cook for about a minute. Once you have that nice and fragrant, you can add two tablespoons of paprika. Stir that in. Then you'll add two tablespoons of cumin. And go ahead and stir that in. The reason I'm stirring it right away is these ground ingredients can get clumped up together and then they won't mix very well if you wait till the end. So I'm trying to get them all mixed up before I go on to the next spice. So next you'll add a tablespoon of ground coriander and mix that together. So the next is the chili or chipotle powder. I already have Italian hot sausage in here and I'm not trying to make this super hot. Typically I'd add about a tablespoon or two if I want to make it hot. I'm going to do about a half a tablespoon. You can always add a little bit later once you've tasted it and if, it, if you want a little bit hotter, you can add some. Next, you can go ahead and add your pound of soaked and drained beans in there. If you're using canned beans, you don't want to add this yet. You'll wait kind of towards the end. Otherwise, they'll just get soggy and mushy. If you're not using beans, you don't have to do this step. So next, you'll add your chili puree that we made earlier. can stir that. Then you can add your tomato paste. I either do about two heaping tablespoons 
or three tablespoons. Kind of depends how much meat and what kind of consistency you're really looking for. And you can stir that in. Next you'll add your three tablespoons of molasses. Go ahead and stir that in. And you want to take your beef broth or your venison broth and add that in. Usually I try and get it to cover the top. You want kind of a soupy type consistency. So we'll see how that is. And this is all going to simmer down and thicken. So you may have to add a little bit more broth as it thickens. Really kind of just depends what consistency you're looking for in your chili. I end up using almost a whole 32 ounces of broth by the end of it. I usually simmer for about three to four hours and I'll stir it occasionally and I'll add in broth occasionally if it's getting too thick. But that's pretty much it. It's, it seems like a lot of work and a lot of time, but it's not too bad. So we'll go ahead and put the lid on. After about three or four hours simmering, you can go ahead and serve with your favorite toppings. Hope you all enjoyed this video and stay warm. Thanks.